just picking up on what Rita was talking about, about the idea of being better grocers and maybe connecting that to Kelly of, you know, when he's, it, he closed out by talking about having really high standards. So maybe it's not just being better grocers, but maybe it's being excellent grocers. And then connecting to Sharon's comments, maybe it's being excellent community owned grocers, right? So when I think about thriving, what could that look like? And um, so I'll just touch on four things that, um, that come up for me. One is roles, uh, transparency, change, and growing co-ops versus going corporate, okay? So roles. What does it look like if we um, elevate and appreciate the value of every role in the co-op and how, they, how their participation uh, contributes to the success and the impact of the co-op. So that could mean 10 and hundreds and thousands of people in alignment around uh, a co successful accomplishment of the co-op's goals, right? And uh, that connects to, um, we put out the four pillars of cooperative governance a while back where we have teaming, accountable empowerment, strategic leadership, and democracy all sitting on a foundation of cooperative values and principles for the success and impact of the co-op. And what came out of that work was really, it's not just the board, it's not just the management, it's actually all of these different levels have a key and unique role to play in the success of the co-op, right? So as leaders and people who are really engaged in the conversation, how can we help make that link between actions and decisions and choices that are being made every day by people in all these different roles with the success of the organization overall, right? So it's not just, oh, this is my job, or oh, I'm just doing community service, or oh, you know, I have this management task. It's actually, I'm contributing to something amazing in our community, right? So uh, start to think about that, this idea of empowering and having high standards and appreciating all of the actions that contribute to the success of the co-op. Um, so then that connects to this idea of transparency. Could we get good at um, uh, describing the context that the co-op is operating in and the issues that the co-op is dealing with so that when we make decisions, provide leadership, make bold moves, it makes sense to people. And we're not surprising people and causing a reaction in our community. When we show uh, the direction and describe what's to come, people are going, nodding their heads, going, oh, I get, I get where that's coming from. And it's because of the story that we have developed that really puts the co-op and its actions in context. It's not easy because we have to have foresight and deliberation like, well, where are we going? Like, how do we describe the goals of the co-op and what are those issues and what is that context? What is bold leadership maybe gonna look like? But I think it's right there for us to be connecting those dots and sharing that with ultimately thousands of people who we really wanna have buying in to the success of the co-op, right? So uh, start to think about that. What would it look like if we're really good communicators about the co-op story and bringing people along with us av as we're figuring it out? So that connects to this idea of change. Um, I think of co-ops as change agents, that we are dynamic in our very nature. We're purpose-driven, we're here to meet member needs, but uh, member needs change over time, societal trends change, market conditions change. So, wow, our environment is really quite dynamic. What does it look like if we become known as leaders in a very dynamic world, right? That, that our communities go, oh, it's amazing how the co-op is continually growing and changing uh, and look at how they bring the community that, that uh, is involved in interacting with the co-op along with that, right? I mean, we do it, but what if we really took that on as part of our responsibility and essential ingredient for the success of a co-op, right? So kind of try, try that out for size. And then just a couple of ways that I think about change. 
Um, one is a, an acronym, and it's, it's uh, uh, almost as fun as the one that Sharon showed. Uh, this acronym stands for do what we do now, comma, better. And this would be incremental improvement, continuous improvement. What do we do last week? What are we doing next week? How can we do the work that we're doing next week a little bit better? Like, just always thinking that way. And then another kind of change uh, that I like to think about is disruptive change. How can, we, uh, how can we rethink what we do, maybe as very nature of what we do, and consider options that aren't just incremental improvement, that might really change the, uh, change the conditions in which we're operating? Uh, I think that Dan at Wheatsville is describing one when he's talking about what they're doing. For 35 years, their self-image was one co-op, one store. Now they're saying, wow, we're going to add another store, we're going to add another store. We don't even know how many. So we're going to keep adding stores because the impact that we produce is so great. That's just actually, um, let's think about who we are differently, right? Other examples of that might be, um, uh, Rethinking how you think about your market region. Maybe you thought of it as, uh, oh, well, this is only this big, but what if you actually thought of it this big? How many more neighborhoods or communities uh, might you be considering if you, if you rethought that? Or consolidations, acquisitions, and mergers. Maybe in our future we're actually doing things more efficiently than we ever did in the last 35 years because of how we're working together. Maybe one co-op per state, you know, just to throw out a disruptive idea. Um, uh, what if we're investing in shared services so we're not redundant in everything that we do, right? So these are just, again, examples of disruptive thinking that kind of goes with this idea of having super high standards and being a, you know, great community-owned grocers. How do we put all that together and not just be a function of our past but really be thinking fresh about the future? Um, so next is um, growing co-ops versus going corporate, okay? So one theme is that more and more people want what we offer, and we actually can scale up. Co-ops scale up pretty well if we know how to do it. Um, and I hope that means we have clean stores that were excellent grocers that operationally were putting all of these things together. And one thing that I hear when we're telling that story is, oh, you're just going corporate. Right? I hear that. And so I've decided, at first I was like, oh, chuckle, chuckle. And then I kind of cringe because it kind of is thrown at you like a weapon. And I decided, oh, we should actually address this head on. Right? There's a fundamental difference between the impact that the co-op provides and the investor-owned chain that actually is going to be serving this market if we don't. Right? And we really probably need to sit down and do the little mini lesson on the difference between co-ops and investor-owned corporations, which are inherently driven by writing a check to the investors and sending it home to them. Co-ops are about retaining wealth in the community, which Sean so beautifully demonstrated. And so if you have uh, the investor-owned chains adding one, three, five, ten stores in your market, the lesson is, well, it's because they're seeing a demand, right? People want what they offer. We could offer that, and the difference is our goal is to retain the wealth in the community and not have the check go out of town, right? And there's probably other ways that you could come at the same thing, but my suggestion is that instead of going, ooh, I wish they wouldn't throw that going corporate thing at us, that we actually address it and have it be part of our story. It's part of that creating transparency in the context for why we're thinking about adding stores or having high standards or doing whatever it is that we actually have to do to compete, right? So let's see, uh, roles, transparency, change, growing co-ops versus going corporate. My last uh, bit is kind of a personal piece, which is um, co-ops are largely about relationships between people. And I've been reflecting on my own role in this work and thinking, oh, I want to bring my best self forward. Right? I want to bring my best self forward. I think I'm stealing this from some of you who I've observed doing that. And I think that as leaders in this work, if we commit to civil, respectful, curious, inviting um, presence in the community, we'll make a difference. 
So that's my own commitment. I encourage you to consider that yourself. And thanks so much for today's conversation.